Hey, welcome in. Welcome to the Arrowhead Attic Podcast. We are here coming to you live. The Kansas City Chiefs are going to the Super Bowl. You only win a you only win a Super Bowl two times every five years, right? Oh! The, the warm-up act is over. Let's bring in Melissa Etheridge, massive Chiefs fan. Melissa, Super Bowl champion, two-time Pro Bowler, and Trent Green. Trent Green, how you hey, doing? Hey, hey, what's going on, guys? Andy, oh. oh, he picked it up! He picked it up! He's gonna score! We'll see you next week. But until then, as always, go Chiefs. Welcome. This is no normal Wacky Wednesday. This is Wide Receiver Fever Part 1. I always like on old albums, whether it was Pink Floyd or Outcast, how they had a Part 1 and Part 2, uh, or or the old Batman series where they always had a cliffhanger. So we're going to do Part 1 this week, and then Part 2 with a great guest coming back from last year next week. I'm Adam Best, of course, here with my guy, Sterling Holmes, and producer Richard behind the scenes. What's going on, Sterling? Just crushed some apple pie, and I'm excited to talk wide receivers. So uh, quite frankly, things are okay over here. Crushed apple pie as in like that or the Jason Biggs style? Oh, no, no. I used a fork. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm not a heathen over here. Okay, good, good. I I don't even know if you, I don't even know if you understand the joke. That's... No, no, American, I did not. No. An, an American pie joke. I think I both, love America. Oh, I love American pie. You, I you, now understand what you, you're talking about. You got about it. You and, got it now. Uh, well, are are you ready to uh, digs in, if you will? He's, I, he's still in a state you, of shock. You, you just went from that and that. Whew. Yeah, you you came in with the wholesome American pie, and I just uh, I just wrecked it for the family audience out there. I needed a minute, and then you came back with a bad digs joke, and now I'm just, I'm just, I'm. Just, hey, best, how are you doing, man? We're, we're piling on, <laughs> we're piling on. Uh, well, we've got a great show for you guys. We're going to preview this rookie wide receiver class, rapid fire style. This is kind of to get you guys introduced, us, us two acclimated with this group of guys. About 23 players that are probably in serious consideration for the Chiefs uh, in the somewhat early rounds and say day one, day two, early day three. Uh, And then we're going to do again, a deeper dive next week. And before we do all of that, everyone listening, everyone who, uh, who wants to throw some money down and hopefully try and win some money just because football season's over. doesn't mean that you can't bet on, on golf, March madness, NBA baseball, right here. DraftKings is offering a fantastic signup bonus for new users. New customers can place a $5 first bet on any sports who instantly claim $150 in bonus bets. When you set up with our code arrowhead, the best part is that you will receive your awards. Even if your first bet loses, Using our code Arrowhead, it not only gets you these great bonuses, but also directly supports our podcast. If you've been considering signing up for DraftKings, make sure you use the code Arrowhead to maximize your first bets. This offer is only available to new customers who are 21 plus and physically present in legal gambling states. Please remember to always gamble responsibly. Check the episode description for the full terms of the offer to see if you qualify. Any quick digs thoughts, Stefan Diggs, who, if you guys don't know, he got traded from the Buffalo Bills to the Houston Texans earlier today. Uh, kind of a blockbuster deal, maybe kicking off wide receiver trading season. Yeah, man, it was a second. Uh, and then they will also be getting, what's this, Stephon Diggs in a fifth and a sixth, if I'm not mistaken. I apologize, I don't have the actual compensation in front of me, but it was a 2025, 2025, not this year, right? Yeah, 2025 second rounder uh, for Diggs. Obviously, I know Chiefs fans are sitting here going, oh, we would love to have Stephon Diggs. Wouldn't you give up a second rounder? The Bills were not going to do that with Kansas City. It's just off the table. I, I, I heard an interesting one today. I remember when the Chiefs were, were – were, this was even different. The Chiefs were shit. Dwayne Bowe was the best wide receiver. You weren't going to trade with the Patriots. And that was when the Chiefs were bad and weren't even in competition. The Bills, in all, likely, in all likelihood, are delusional enough to think, hey, we have Josh Allen. We're still in competition with Kansas City. They're not, but you guarantee yourself they're going to feel that way. So – no, the Chiefs were not going to have an opportunity to get Stephon Diggs. If you look at the contract, he still has three more years left um, on this massive deal, at least three more years. He's playing to year 35 on this current contract. Um, it's a very hefty deal. 
But if you are the Houston Texans, this makes all the sense in the world. You know why? All your cornerstone pieces are on rookie contracts. Your best, one of the best left tackles in football is your highest paid player. Mm -hmm. Your second highest paid player is now Stephon Diggs. Your third highest paid player is, um, for, oh, I'm trying to look at who it was. But but the, the, the point remains, they still have cap space to work with. This makes all the sense for the Texans. You can overpay for aging production when you have your cornerstone wide receivers, Nico Collins, Tank Dell rookie deals, your two best defensive players, um, uh, Stingley Jr., Will Anderson on rookie contracts, your quarterback on a rookie deal. Because by the time it's time to pay those dudes, well, all these massive contracts you overpaid for the veterans on, well, they're now off the books. So it does not matter any longer. The Texans are doing this the exact right way. They're now the second best team in the AFC right behind Kansas City. Uh, I have been just enamored with how they have handled this entire situation. Yeah, I would hate this for us because a 30-year-old a wide receiver with that kind of cap hit, huge, huge risk. The age cliff is coming. We've already seen maybe possibly Stephon Diggs lose a step. I, yeah. It's hard to say how much his game has deteriorated versus how much he was unhappy in Buffalo. But when you're on a rookie contract, you have a little bit more margin of error. You have a little bit more room to gamble. This reminds me a lot of what the Chiefs did with Sammy Watkins when uh, Patrick Mahomes is on his rookie deal. Did it work out as well as they wanted to? No, but it gave them another threat, another weapon. It paid dividends. And again, they had more room to gamble. I think this is a... the the right move for a team uh, with a quarterback on their rookie contract. And, and also Tank Dell coming off a big injury. Nico yeah. Collins, we've only seen one really good year. The sophomore slump is a real thing. It's a young offensive coordinator. You got to applaud the Texans for just continuing to pile on and trying to put their new coach and new quarterback in a can't fail situation. And by the way, the third cap hit guy is Daniil Hunter. I mean, the Texans have done just a phenomenal job of building this team this offseason. Again, it works very well for the Houston Texans. I think the Bills had to do this eventually. You can't just perpetually sit around, especially with a lot of the losses defensively that they had this year, sit around and say, hey, yeah, we're going to keep running it back with the same group. You're not getting better. They needed to uh, address and get some draft capital back for, again, a unhappy dude. Uh, makes a lot of sense. It's almost like one of those marriages that you know it's just not going to work. And you're like, why are you guys trying? And then Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs are like, we're going to prove you wrong. And then behind the scenes, everyone's like, yeah, we know they're going to break up. They break up. And we're like, we told you. We told you it wasn't going to work. Well, that's what just happened. I think it's the right move for them too, though, because the door has been slammed shut on this era of the Bills and Josh Allen. So they're kind of taking a book out of the Chiefs, I mean, a page out of the Chiefs book by saying, maybe Josh Allen is good enough. We don't have to pay a receiver $30 million a year. They might be right. I think they're they're probably going to draft someone at 28. Now a receiver at 28, which puts yet another receiver going off the board before the Chiefs. That's something to think about as we go into this exercise. Right now, it's something like Curtis Samuel and Khalil Shakir and uh, uh, Deontay <laughs> Hardy. Maybe is that the other guy? I don't. I don't know. They're finishing third in the AFC East. And I'm the biggest Josh Allen supporter, I think, out there. I'm the biggest non-Bills Josh Allen supporter out there. And I still think the Bills are going to be around 9-8 and eight this year. I just do not believe in the Jets. I definitely believe in the Dolphins, but I, I can't with the Jets until I see uh, Aaron Rodgers stay healthy and some of those things. It, it just seems like that's headed the wrong direction, but we shall see. I, I agree. I don't think they're going to win the AFC East. How about this? This is a Chief show. Earmuffs, kids. Fuck the Bills. Let's talk about the Chiefs and what they could do at wide receiver. Let's hit it with the new segment here, Best. Yeah, so like I said, we're going to do a rapid-fire style breakdown of each of these receivers. Sterling and I are going to rotate, uh, reading them off. At the end of them, we're going to say whether we're higher or lower than consensus or just wait and see. Kind of we're in line with consensus. We need more information. We'll make our decision later. We're not going to waste any time on the top three. Marvin Harrison Jr. of Ohio State, Malik Neighbors of LSU, and Roman Dunze of Washington, you know, they're all going in the top 10. This is maybe the best class we've seen since 2014 when, when they had Sammy Watkins, Mike Evans, and Odell. Maybe, maybe even all the way back to 2011 when they had A.J. Green and Julio Jones. We're not going to get those guys. I don't think Veach believes in 
using that kind of capital on a wide receiver with Patrick Mahomes. So we're just going to take them out and start with the consensus number four. I use the underdog rankings. Friend of the show, Hayden Winks, put those together. I like that because they not only uh, scour data, they grind tape. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. And also their community is already drafting and sort of sorting these players out. So I just thought this was the best way to kind of uh, find the market consensus. So let's start with number four, Brian Thomas Jr. of LSU. He's 6'3", 209 pounds, 21.5 years old. His breakout age, and we're going to define breakout age as when they first posted a dominator rating of 20% or higher. Now, what is a dominator rating? That's a combo of their team's receiving yards and receiving touchdowns. So whenever that player had 20% or higher of their team's receiving yards and receiving touchdowns combined, they officially broke out. Now, why is this a big deal? It's predicted a tremendous amount of fantasy success and failures for, for wideouts. You want a guy who breaks out young. Uh, if a guy's you know beating up 18 year olds when he's 23, not as impressive as going off when you're 19. You know these guys are still developing; they haven't played as much football, so that is a key metric. The other thing we're looking at with all these players is relative athletic score via the great math bomb. Uh, basically, what that does is that gives us their entire measurables and combine uh, combine performance in in one number. Right. So we don't have to just sit here and obsess over 40s, you know, how fast these guys can run in a straight line. Uh, so for Brian Thomas, that's 9.97. That's 10th best since 1987 uh, out of like thousands of receivers. So this guy can really, he's big and he can move. His comps are Martavis Bryant and Christian Watson. And then the key question here is can he run a full route tree? Or is he just a big play merchant? So we're going to ask the question higher or lower. I, I'm going to go lower just because people are talking about him like he's almost in this top three. And I just don't think we've seen nearly enough for this guy to be like the undisputed wide receiver four. It's hard because when you look at the athletic numbers that he has put up and just uh, – what he translates to, it's pretty unprecedented. I mean, 10th since 1987. Now, I get it. LSU is a pass-happy offense. You're going to put up a lot of stats. Obviously, Daniel's down there throwing the rock. He was a stud. I saw him in person when I went at Mizzou. I, I, I watched him, and he's good, dude. He's crazy. If he's there at 32, I think – Without a doubt, you take him. I, I just don't believe he's going to be there at 32. I, I, I think Brian Thomas is for sure off the board. What do you think? I think I he's off the board. Uh, I agree with you. If he's there at 32, the upside is so immense you take him. But I think there's so much risk with this player that trading up for him uh, with the guys that you can get in the second and third round, it's way too risky for my taste. Sure. Um yeah, obviously not trading up for him, but he's there at 32, all in. Um, I, I guess I'd say stay. I, th I think he is four. I, I, I would say he is four. So instead of upper or lower, I feel like I'm it lockstep that he he's he's number four. You want to take McConkey? I do. I would love to take Lad McConkey. By the way, everyone who's listening right now. Um, Supposed to be interviewing Lad McConkey and actually a few other wide receivers as we're getting closer to the draft. Uh, but Lad McConkey supposed to be interviewing him on Friday, whether that drops Friday evening, Saturday, Monday, whenever it does. Get excited. Very excited to talk to Lad. Uh, again, a guy who I think potentially might be in the range mm -hmm. for the Kansas City Chiefs. So I'll try and throw a couple of Chiefs-centric questions. Hopefully he doesn't know what I'm trying to do, but I'll see if I can lead him to Kansas City. Uh, Lad McConkey, six foot, 186, 22.4 years old out of Georgia. Um, his breakout age, at least according to the, the metrics we are using, he didn't officially break out, only played in nine games last year. Uh, he was injured a little bit, and obviously we know how Georgia operates. Um, they're always a run-first team. Their defense second. 
And as far as how they use their wide receivers, tight ends, they have so much talent out there. The ball just gets spread around. So as far as a breakout age, I'm not concerned there. His relative athletic score via, again, Math Bomb, 8.88. He's an athletic dude. Uh, I think he's more athletic than maybe the people probably give him credit for. Um, more of a slot guy, probably. His comps uh, have been Percy Harvin, Garrett Wilson. He's got great hands. He gets open. Um I, I saw it earlier, and, I, and I'm, I'm actually a, a pretty big fan of uh, what Trevor said. Uh, he makes sense, Lad McConkie. He's NFL ready, high floor. He does seemingly he, – he's a guy that has a high floor, but what is his ceiling going to be? He, he almost reminds me of George Karloffis when the Chiefs took him, right? When the Chiefs needed a defensive end, they needed a guy at that time who could come in, step in week one, game one, and at least you know he's not going to make a fool of himself. A lot of rookies can make a fool of themselves, and you can't play him week one, sometimes halfway through the first season. So with Lab McConkey, I don't think you have that worry. I, I would almost liken him to George Karloff, but on the offensive side of the ball. If Lad McConkey is there at 32 and Brian Thomas is off, I think Lad's the way I'm going. But kind of like George Karloff, is he's somewhat of a late bloomer just because he didn't get a lot of opportunity with Brock Bowers, George Pickens, all the target competition there in Georgia. I'm going to stay in the same uh, five is, is pretty high. I'm not necessarily sure that he is just a slot guy. Uh, I, I think he can, he can move around the formation and win in different ways. I would be over the moon. If the chiefs got him at 32, if he, if he fell there, unfortunately, I think he's going to keep rising. Yeah. By no, the way, I'm, I'm keeping him at five. I, I think again, okay. he's it's Brian Thomas four. And then I think lad McConkey's five. Number six. Xavier Worthy, Texas. He's 5'11", 165 pounds, pretty dang light, 20.9 years old. His breakout age was 18.4. That's in the 97th percentile. Very, very good and and uh, against good competition as well. Uh, relative athletic score, 9.37. Not as mind-blowing as some of these other guys, but I think he gets punished a little bit for being so light, for kind of being a smaller guy. The comps here are pretty obvious. Hollywood Brown, Deshaun Jackson. If you remember, Xavier Worthy broke the combine all-time 40 record, came in, I think, at 4.21, just absolutely flying. I think the key question is, is he too damn small? You know, is he gonna kind of be a one-trick pony in the pros and just gonna be, you know, sort of a field stretcher? Uh higher or lower Sterling. Yeah, I think he should go lower. Um, I, I'm not a big fan. I think all the combine numbers and the athleticism, all that stuff, that's great. That's super fun. Super fun. I don't think it really translates. We have seen so many guys who run these incredibly fast 40s. They get drafted high because they're like, oh, well, if he can learn to catch the ball and learn the route tree. That's the hard part about football. Why don't you see track stars all the time just littered around the NFL? Because it's damn hard. Again, I'm not saying he can't, but you're right. That size worries me. That is my size. I am seven pounds, five pounds heavier than him. Okay? No. Do you see me? Hey, look at me. Is this the body type of an NFL superstar? This is the body type of a guy who's maybe. A I mean, Mahomes has kind of changed, has kind of normalized, you know, normal bodies winning championships and being a superstar. But I, I hear what you're saying. I'm with you. I'm going to do the gladiator. He's lower. He's lower. Yeah. I, I also think Chiefs fans have a, again, DeAnthony Thomas, I'm seeing from Oregon Fish. You know, you know, there's so many of these speedster light guys who you're like, oh, they're going to be studs. And you realize, oh, they can just run really fast. And that's about it. Um, I guess Tank Dell is maybe the pushback of a small guy, but he also got injured last year. So kind of the, because um, Tank Dell, that was the big concern with him was his size. All right. Uh, Donnie Mitchell, Texas. 6'2", 205, 21 and a half years old. His breakout age was 20.9, so relatively recent. His RAS, again, his relative athletic score. Chiefs fans, you're going to love this one. 9.97, that's 11th, right? Brian Thomas was 10th since 1987. Mitchell has been 11th since 1987. Some of his comps have been Sammy Watkins, Mike Wallace. Um, I would probably say Mike Williams. Uh, his key question is probably why didn't his, tra uh, his tra traits translate more at Texas? 
Um, yeah, the yeah. production profile just really wasn't there, even compared to teammate Xavier Worthy. He, he just scares me. I think it would be very easy to ignore the profile, the production, the data, and just look at this guy, uh, look at the highlights, look at his combine stuff. But, you know, this isn't, we're not making a highlight reel. This isn't the underwear Olympics. This is how well do you play the, the you know, the technical position of receiver. And I'm not convinced that he is worthy of a late round first pick or late first round pick. So I'm, I'm lower on AD Mitchell, uh, a little bit lower. I want to participate in the underwear Olympics best. Okay. That's all. That's all I'm you've, saying. You've never heard that one before for the combine. No, that's great, man. Um, I just was thinking that you, uh, there's uh, some Olympic events that I was missing out on or something. I was like, wow, best really uh, has the, uh, his nose to the grind right there. Uh, I, I, if I'm pretty much in on Brian Thomas, who again, I think had more production than AD Mitchell. I'm also in on Mitchell just for size for Kansas city. The, the chiefs, they don't know their small bodied, light bodied dude. I, I want a bigger guy. I want to, I want this 6'2, 205. Who's you want a proper X, right? Yeah. I, I, I want, I want to take a shot on it. Again, is there more, is the floor lower? Yeah. Yeah. The floor is lower, but the ceiling's higher. Take a shot, take a chance. I think AD Mitchell, again, is a guy that I would take a chance on if, again, I would. I'm moving him to six, right, above Xavier Worthy. So I, I'm still going Brian Thomas four, Ladd McConkey five, Mitchell six. Um, so I guess technically I'm going up, even if it's just a little bit. But, yeah, I'm, I'm in on that that sort of body type. Makes sense. Eight, Ricky Pearsall, Florida, 6'1", 189 pounds, 23.5 years old. A little bit older. Something to keep in mind, Veach – drafts very young i think he was in, in terms of average age of his draft picks i think he was fourth youngest so keep that in mind with some of these older receivers his breakout age was 21 again not super young but not the biggest thing in the world relative athletic score 9.78 this guy is a very good athlete uh de deceptively good athlete his comps are jerry judy that's going to scare you but then emmanuel sanders you got to like that. The key question here is, is he a slot only player? And it will be interesting to see how the chiefs view these guys. Cause there are some definitely some definite like primary slot guys in this draft. Do they see Rashi rice as a power slot or do they see him as a true combo all around receiver? Does Kelsey need to be inside more? Do they want to get, uh, Hollywood Brown off press and open by using him as a vertical slot. Who knows? But they were looking at Tyler Boyd. I don't know if you saw that news. So that shows me that they think their current receiving core is versatile. And, and of course, we have to mention there's a lot up in the air with Rasheed Rice right now. So with, with Ricky Pearsall, the question of higher or lower, I, I think this is – I'm tempted to go lower, but I think this is pretty – uh, a pretty good number for him. I'm going to stick here. Yeah, I, I think sticking's the right move as well, best. Um, the age is obviously a little bit of a concern. I don't know if concern's the right word. It, it's just when it comes time for that second contract, it, it's probably not going to be here in Kansas City, right? That that That's more or less what, it, what it's coming down to. So if you're content with four or five years, it doesn't really matter. But it comes time to say, hey, are we going to give that guy a second contract, which let's just say it's three or four years and you pay him till he's 32. Oh, that doesn't make a lot of sense, right? And that and that's obviously very, very far in the future. But again, if you're drafting a guy at that age, I do think, especially in the first round, there might come some consideration for that. You do get a fifth year, the fifth year extension in the first round. So Correct. That, that's something to think about first versus second. Uh, next one. And again, I'm not saying the Chiefs are going to draft a wide receiver in the first round, but uh, we're just going through all of this list because I think everyone wants to get a little more insight on these dudes. Uh, this is a fun one, a unique one. Uh, a guy who, is he wide receiver? Is he going to all of a sudden get thrown out and move to, to tight end? That's Keon Coleman, FSU, 6'3", 213. 
uh, 28.8 years old. His break at age was 19.3, which is great. His RAS, his relative athletic score is 8.05, not ideal. His comps have been Allen Robinson, Gabe Davis, uh, sorry, Gabe Davis. And the main question is, can this dude separate at all? Hmm. So higher or lower? I'm way lower on this guy. If you think they're thinking about moving him to tight end, wait till you meet his teammate a little long later in this exercise. I just get bad vibes with him. You look at the route tree. Uh, it's just not there. I'm getting, he just feels like a Jonathan Baldwin. I'm sorry. That that's, that's the taste I have in my mouth. I can't do it. I'm maybe the lowest versus consensus on him than anybody else on the board. Yeah. I'm, I'm lower on him. I, I'm not big on dudes that can't separate. Although I will say, Rasheed Rice, that was not his strong suit in college. I mean, his whole thing was he can go up and get it. He can win some 50-50 balls. He was a zone buster. He at least showed a way to get open, I suppose. What is it? Are you under attack? Are you playing Grand Theft <laughs> Auto? Was that like a... It, it's, it's a plane, you know? I feel like I'm... You know, in Normandy or something. I don't know. Do you get going. five stars in the and you have the copters after you now in, in, in GTA? I don't know. Yeah. So we're both lower on him. Gotta be. Gotta be. It, it is interesting though. He kind of bombed the forty, and then on that uh, the gauntlet where you run across the field uh, as fast as you can, but under control and catch passes and drop them. He had the fastest time on that according to the GPS miles per hour. So that's an interesting discussion on track speed versus playing speed. And Alan Robinson is a perfect example of a guy that uh, was pretty slow by track and athletic standards, but played faster and was a great receiver. So great let's for five years. <laughs> What's that? Great for five years. Great for five fell years. Off very hard. I will also say Amon Ross St. Brown. Amon Ross St. Brad is not a very... Uh, he put a poor combine numbers. He, he his forty time was brutal. I think his shuttle was pretty good, though. I'd have to go back and look at that. I know his forty time was like, whoa, okay, yeah, yeah. No, you're not you're not wrong, and I think that's why he slipped to the the fourth or fifth round, whatever it was. Fourth sounds right. Next up is number ten, Troy Franklin, Oregon, six foot two, one hundred and seventy six pounds. Now that. Uh, that would be an outlier, that BMI. That's like Todd Pinkston and not a lot of other players, that tall, that skinny. 21.1 years old, break it at, breakout age, 19.6, pretty good. RAS, 9.33, you know, pretty good as well. The comps here are Jamison Williams and Darnell Mooney. I think, to be fair to him, he can do a little bit more after the catch than we've seen from either of those guys. There might be a, a sprinkle of Devontae Smith in his game. And I already mentioned the key uh, question, would his BMI be an outlier? It, it would. But I, again, I just kind of get a Devontae Smith feel with this guy. Uh, we're already kind of knocking him uh, based on his size. I don't want to double count here, right? He's at 10. He's an extremely good receiver, was super productive, really flashes when you watch him, but you know, there's the body thing. So I think this is good. And I also think the the draft community, Twitter, just football fans in general are too down on this guy. I don't really understand it. Uh, I would be pretty happy if the Chiefs picked him. I don't know about at 32 because he, he seems to be getting mocked a little later than that, but he's a good player. Yeah, I, I, I think 10 is about – on this list is right in line. I, I think that's that's perfectly fine. Yeah, again, I, you're right. I wouldn't want him at 32 necessarily, but you get him. I don't know if there's a chance to to trade back up, maybe like 48, something like that. You know, high 50s, low low. No, high 40s, low 50s. I think I think you know that might be the move. Again, I don't think the Chiefs trade up, but that's about where I think he's going to fall. Um, yeah, I guess I, I guess 10 is exactly where I think. Okay. Uh, go to Roman Wilson. Roman Wilson might be interviewing him. It's either going to be me or someone else, but uh, Roman Wilson is another guy from Michigan, 5'11", 185. Again, a little bit of a shorter, not quite six feet, 
185, 22.8 years old. His breakout age, 22.2. Uh, his RAS actually did not qualify because of a lack of measurements. His comps have been Randall Cobb, Golden Tate. And then the key question with Roman Wilson is reliable, but is, is his upside worth it early? I'm lower on him. I think this is a little high for his his upside, his potential upside. He's also, I think, definitely a slot-only guy. Again, how well does that fit in Kansas City? But just in general, I'm lower. I think 11's fine. Uh, again, it kind of goes with my lad, McConkie. I like lad better. But as far as a guy who I think has a higher floor, lower ceiling, but a guy who I think if the Chiefs had him, you know, week one, he might be out there and you trust him, right? I don't know if you can say mm-hmm. that about some of the other guys who we've talked about, even like Troy Franklin. Again, I think it might take some learning curve there. Uh, but with with Roman, I think if you throw him out there week one, whoever drafts him, they're going to say, all right, he can go out there. And again, might not go for over 1,200 yards ever in his career. Maybe he struggles to get to 1,000, but I think you could probably write him down. Uh, a good Sky Moore, like what Sky Moore is supposed to be maybe. Oh. No, I definitely don't want him. So, no, I, what he was supposed to be? Hey, he's, he, he's coming from the same state too. So, Ugh. twelve. Johnny Wilson, FSU. This is the guy I was referring to, uh, who feels like a tight end because he is six foot six, two hundred and thirty one pounds. That is a huge receiver. Twenty three years old, a little bit older. Breakout age twenty one point four. RAS nine point eight eight. He's a very good athlete, and the comps here are are pretty. Pretty dicey, pretty scary. <laughs> Chase Claypool and Doriel Green Beckham. I mean, that is that is terrifying. That's horrible. DGB, stuff. baby. Yeah, he's he's a Springfield guy. He went to my high school. So uh light it up. Re- oh man, really, really wanted him to succeed. That hurt. Uh so the key question here is he's a freak, but does he know how to actually play wide receiver? Uh, kind of looking at him and how he catches and how he runs routes and everything. I'm gonna say no. I'm much lower here too. The FSU guys are probably my least favorite players this year. How about you, Sterling? Yeah, you see the size and the athleticism, and it's tantalizing. I mean, hell, even when you say Chase Claypool and DGB, both those guys, you're like, well, we saw a talent. Mm -hmm. We saw a talent. It was other things. I mean, DGB, as a Mizzou guy, I mean, that was just brutal, man. Uh, You're sitting here going, stop. Put down the weed, uh, allegedly. I don't know. I don't, but oh man, it's just. And now it's legal, so. Yeah, but still, dude. Like, I know. Yeah. I know. Um, no, I. It would be fun for the sake of what the Chiefs could do with a guy with that athleticism and that size. It'd be unique, but it's not like they really did it with Jody Fortson. Like, they kind of had a guy who was similar where he's like a wide receiver slash tight end. What do you do? Oh, what's going to be a great mismatch. And then you never really actually see it come game time. He couldn't stay healthy too. He, he had a few flashes where there was one point, I don't know if it was, a, I think it was a two, two, three years ago where it lo- he had a good game against Washington. It looked like, okay, maybe he could be a red zone weapon catch you know, 500 yards, six touchdowns that, that never materialized. So I think you're going to yeah. be excited to, uh, to get into this next guy. So I'll let you have that one. Xavier Leggett, another guy, the third of the dudes I'll be interviewing Xavier Leggett, South Carolina, 6'1", 221, 23.1 years old. So he is a little bit older, obviously his breakout age was 22.6. His RAS is 9.66. His comps have been Cordell Patterson and Debo Samuel. And then the key question is, it took him a long time to eventually emerge. I am much higher on Xavier Leggett. Um, I think it's there's a reason why it took him a long time. He, he was kind of learning the new position. And once he learned it, he learned it. I, I, I am all in on Xavier Leggett. Again, maybe 32 is, is steep for me. But, oh, just Xavier Leggett in Kansas City would be just phenomenal. Just phenomenal. So, yeah. Higher on Xavier Leggett. Keep in mind the Chiefs have traded up into the second round twice for wide receiver. They did that with Nicole Hardman, and they did that last year, moving from I think it was 63 to 55 for, for Rasheed Rice. I like trading up in the second round much better than I do in the first receiver. At, at the opportunity cost there, go up and get your guy. I'm right at market with Xavier Leggett. 
I, because I had a lot of things I got right with receivers last year. I was super into Jaden Reed. I was higher than consistent on Rasheed Rice. But I was really wrong about one player, at least so far. I think he's in a bad situation. But I've been wrong about Jonathan Mingo so far. And I got enamored chasing the next DK Metcalf, chasing the next AJ Brown. I'm not going to do it again. I'm a little trigger shy here. So I'm going to stay at market. I think he's a tantalizing player. Uh, there just are some red flags. So I, I think it just depends on, on where he goes. Uh, next up is Jermaine Burton from Alabama. Six foot tall, 196 pounds, 22.7 years old. His breakout age this past season, 22.2. In Alabama, I mean, you know, you basically get one year to shine down there, right? Or down here, yeah. right? Can, can you believe the Crimson Tide are in the Final Four? I mean, isn't that crazy? I mean, they're a basketball school. <sighs> that, that would be fighting words to people down here, but it, it's a funny joke. Uh, so his relative athletic score, pretty good, 9.57. The comps are Torrey Smith, Darius Slayton. Uh, those are fine. Torrey Smith is better than people remember, I think. He was just really consistent year in, year out. Wasn't sexy, but was good. And Darius Slayton is probably better than people think, too. The key question here is, is he a stable, reliable human being? So the story on Jermaine Burton was that there, some game, the students like rushed the field and he like hit a girl in the head. Not, not great. Pretty bad stuff. There's been some other character concerns here. He probably would be uh, rated much higher if he wasn't a knucklehead. Uh, I, I think he's a really good player. You watch the tape and, and, and you dig into things and he looks good. But I, I just think, I know the Chiefs take chances on guys sometimes, so maybe, but I can't get down with this guy, really. Um, I, I am higher... I am higher on market than him. I think he's better than this, but it's also terrifying. So for the Chiefs. Yeah, I mean, the Chiefs have glossed over guys for character issues, and they've been fine come NFL time. They've drafted guys because they thought they wouldn't have character issues, and then all of a sudden they do. It's a crapshoot, man. I mean, it's the NFL. You never know what's going to happen when some dude who's younger all of a sudden gets a lot of money. And next thing you know, they're back in their hometown and <laughs> they're old right. friends. Yeah, it's just one of those situations where, again, man, it's just, it's, you don't know. You just don't. Um, I'd probably say the Chiefs would not have him on his board because of character issues, what they're dealing with, with again, Rasheed Rice, they had to deal with it with Tyreek Hill. Um, but also, you're going to miss out on some talented players and you're going to draft the uh, Sky Moores over the George Pickens. So, and you, George Pickens, to an extent, was more me first than necessarily. When I say character, I don't necessarily mean they had to have done something off the field. It can also relate to a me first kind of guy. Stefan Diggsing, right? Yes, sure. Um, yeah, and if you think back to last year, I'm not sure this news really resonated and made the rounds, but Dane Brugler said on a podcast that there were some character concerns, some character issues with Rasheed Rice, that – that teams were a little afraid that he wasn't grown up enough. They didn't love the circle he ran with. So there were some issues there. Will the Chiefs go back to the well? I don't I don't know. It, it'd be kind of a scary time to do that, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, next one, Jalen Polk from Washington, 6'1", 203, 21.9 years old. His breakout age was 21.4. His RAS was 9.11. His comps are Marvin Jones and Romeo Dobbs. And the key question is, jack of all trades, master of none. What do you think of Jalen Polk? I'm, I'm a big fan. Nothing is like ridiculously sexy about this guy, but he can just flat out play. He's a guy that can get open. I think he'd be great outside as a possession receiver, kind of in between doing damage in the intermediate, in between where Rasheed Rice eats and where Hollywood Brown eats deep. He would be the perfect complement to those two guys. I think he can just he can just flat out play. Marvin Jones, I like that comp. People forget how good Marvin Jones was. He had numerous thousand plus yard seasons. I think he had a really really big season one year. Caught a lot of touchdowns from Matt Stafford. If you think back, it's been a while. Uh, I like him a lot. I'm higher than this on him. I just think he's a guy. We get enamored with all these these freak athletes and the relative athletic score, but this is just a guy that knows how to play football. He gets it. He's a good technical route runner. He just has that innate feel that you cannot coach, and a lot of these guys don't have. How about you? 
Yeah, I'm, I was trying to actually go down and look at some uh, some RAS scores of some guys. He He's right in line, actually, a little bit higher than a guy like Marvin Jones. Marvin Jones, it looks like, came in at 8.86. And, and yeah, I think the Chiefs have actually tried to go with, at least in the past, hey, what we're going to do is we're going to find someone who is a master of a certain trait, right? We got the deep ball guy, McCall Horn. That was at least a thought. You got Sky Moore, who's supposed to be the separator. You got MVS, who's a deep ball threat. And then what happened? Well, teams are like they they can't do anything else. That's all they can do. So we're not worried about him going underneath. So I think someone who's a little more well rounded, like Polk, actually does make some sense here. Seems like we're in agreement there. Sixteen, Javon Baker, University of Central Florida, six one two zero two. 22.1 years old, his breakout age, 20.5, his relative athletic score, not as good, 7.93. But again, I think a trend you're going to hear us talking about is we probably put too much stock into that because there have been a lot of good receivers in the past that have had, uh, pun intended, bombed that that score. Uh, the comps here are James Jones and Dontavian Wicks, a couple of Packers primarily. The key question is he he's physical but kind of struggles to really get open, to separate. Again, that's a, that's a common uh, thread here. Uh, I, I think I'm kind of right in step with where the consensus is. However, there are some guys coming up that I do like better than Javon Baker. So I'm tentatively sticking. Yeah, I'll stick with him. Um, I like the physicality of him. Again, uh, the physicality, I guess, almost reminds you of uh, of a Rasheed Rice, right? Um, Some of the same strengths and concerns. So I'll I'll stay pat right there at 16. Uh, Malik Washington, Texas so far, now number three from Texas. That's That's a misprint. He's from Virginia. Sorry about that. Oh, you lied to me? I was like, I don't know this guy. Copy and paste. It, so. <laughs> I was like, I don't know this dude, but Malik Washington, 5'9", 191, 23.2 years old, breakout age 20.7, his RAS 7.69. Comps are Wandale Robinson or Zay Flowers. Uh, one great comp, one not so great comp. And the key question is slot only in limited tree. I don't know much about Malik Washington, so I'm not going to pretend I do. Uh, if you know more than me best, feel free. Yeah, we're getting in the weeds here, but I have been uh, getting acquainted with these guys. I actually like Wandell Robbins, and he's been hurt quite a bit. He is pretty small, but the guy can get open. Zay Flowers obviously uh, can do a lot of things out there on the field. He he's for five nine. He, he's got you know good strength. He plays with good strength, but I just don't think he's a fit for the Chiefs, especially with Hollywood Brown in in, in town. We have too many of these guys that have come through Kansas city. I think it's time to go for a different kind of receiver. I'm, I'm lower on him, especially for the chiefs. Mm. Number 18, Malachi Corley, Western Kentucky, 5'11", torn 50 pounds, 22 years old. His breakout age was 20.5 relative athletic score, not available yet because of measurables. Uh, his, I don't know if they've had their pro day or not at Western Kentucky, but that information, uh, as of airtime wasn't available. The comps here, Pretty frightening. LaVisca Chenault and Amari Rogers. The question here, is he a gimmick player only? To me, he plays more like a running back. I don't think he's ever going to run that full tree. He's not like, he's not like Xavier Leggett where he's just this overwhelming athlete where you can get swept up in, Hey, we'll, we'll figure out the receiver stuff later. And like DK Metcalf, if he only does three or four things out in the football field and, and, you know, kills everybody with them, We're good with that. I just don't see that potential here with him. He scares me. I'm lower. I just don't think the juice is worth the squeeze here. Yeah, on the the gimmick player only, I guess one of my questions would be, is it almost like an Antonio Gibson? Like, Antonio Gibson was actually a wide receiver who who transitioned to running back. You know, I'm trying to think of another player. There's a couple of who got guys who are, you know, I don't want to say Dexter McCluster because that's the Curtis Samuel, maybe Curtis Samuel's another guy. That's that's like, a, a pretty good example. And it's one of those ones where like it can pay off, but also for every Curtis Samuel and Antonio Gibson, you know, either either way, you have the 
you do have the Dexter clusters. You do have those guys that make you extremely worried because they don't have a traditional position. And while it seems great, you're like, oh, we can use them in so many different roles. Well, you find out you actually can't use them in any role. So that's the one concern there. Uh, Jalen McMillan from Washington, 6'1", 197, 22.3 years old. His breakout age is 19.7, which is just absolutely outstanding. His RAS via Math Bomb, again, is 9.33. His comps are Tyler Boyd and Nelson Aguilar. Nelson Aguilar, obviously a guy who struggled very early in his career, mostly with drops, before really coming on strong. I think Nelson Aguilar is now maybe considered even an underrated, although I would I would probably hearken to say, according to the contracts he has received, maybe not underrated by the rest of the NFL. Tyler Boyd has been fairly consistent for a good chunk of time now. I think Tyler Boyd's really starting to fall off, so that's why you won't hear me clamor for the Chiefs to get Tyler Boyd. And then the key question is, are the numbers inflated because of the star wide receiver teammates as well as uh, Michael Pinnock Jr. just going off the last uh, last year there. Yeah, the the CEA, CEH corollary here. Uh, I do worry about a guy playing with Roma Dunze and Michael Pinnock and Jalen Polk. It feels a lot like that LSU year that produced uh, not only Clyde Edwards Alaire, but I, I'm blanking on the receiver that went down to Carolina and just completely got lost down there. Um, oh man, the one that went to Carolina. Yeah. The, the, the kind of the third wheel, uh, with Jamar and Justin. Man. Um, one second, you, you keep talking. I'm, okay. I'm going to, I'm going to find, you're going to find that for us. So I'm lower here. Nothing against him. I kind of think he's a slot guy too. I don't know if the fit here in Kansas city is excellent. I like the guys below him better. Some of them. So I'm, I'm definitely lower here. Uh, for sure. No, it wasn't Shy Smith. He was because that guy went to South Carolina. Um, Terrence Marshall, maybe. Correct. Yeah, he went to LSU. Terrence Marshall, yeah. Terrace Marshall, I think. Terrace Marshall. Sorry, yeah, it's Terrace. Just, yeah. just completely blanked out on him, and I mean that's what's happened to him. He just has disappeared. So you have to be very careful. I mean, Chiefs fans will remember Ryan Sims, a guy who plays next to. To Julius Peppers, I mean, you're going to look pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I forgot about him so much. I added an extra N into his name as Terrence instead of Terrace. He hasn't earned Terrace to be, and and he, to, to be frank, a lot of people in Kansas City were interested in him. I was interested in him. And then, then they traded that pick for Orlando Brown Jr. and didn't have a shot at him. And not, that was probably a good thing. Yeah. Uh, Tez Walker out of UNC, 6'2", 193, 22.8 years old. His breakout age was 21.2. His RAS, outstanding at 9.88. His comps, Kenny Stills, <laughs> chosen Robbie Anderson. When did he go? Like, it was always Robbie Anderson. And then all of a sudden, he had like a really bad year. And he's like, you know what's going to get me back on the map? I'm going by chosen now. Like, yeah, okay, the, man. The, the meta world piece trick, it, it just doesn't work. Yeah, That's, but like you normally do it after you have like a really good year. Like you're like, okay, I'm Bono now. I'm just just one name, d nothing else. I'm just Bono. I'm Seal, you, you know? Yeah, you can't all of a sudden just fall off and go, you know what? This will get me on a new team. They'll think I have to be good if I go by Chosen now. So Chosen Robbie Anderson. Uh, and then the key question about Tez Walker from UNC is, is he strictly a deep threat? I'm higher here. This is the the kind of Rasheed Rice of this year where you got to wonder if he pissed in everyone's Kool-Aid. I, I don't understand why there's so much hate uh, uh, of Tez Walker. I think well, best, if he did that, I, I would actually be very low on him because I, I, as someone who, you know, the media, I, I don't want to all of a sudden drink the Kool-Aid and then next thing I know, I'm like, oh, what's that taste? So, yeah, stay away from the lemon lime. Uh I like him. I like him. I think he's a, a big play threat waiting to happen. And if you want to get discount Brian Thomas or discount AD Mitchell a whole round later and potentially be looking a year from now at a Rishi Rice versus Quentin Johnson situation, this is a good guy to wait and sit on and take later. I'm much higher than 20 on him. I'd be closer to, I don't know, something like 12. So I think this would be an excellent target for the Chiefs. Uh, given his size and athleticism. Yeah, you're thinking around uh, 64, right? Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe even later. Maybe even later. Maybe they could even trade up into uh, the 70s. I think there are going to be some good guys available right at the start of round three.
Yeah. Uh, all right. I'll go with this one because this is my this is my kind of later sleeper, if you will. Um, Brendan Rice from USC, 6'2", 208, 22 years old. His breakout age was 18.5, which is just phenomenal. His RAS is 8.73. Again, it's it's solid. His comms are Josh Palmer and Nico Collins. Key question about him is doesn't separate on film. This is obviously the son of Jerry Rice. And I'm biased here. I had a chance to interview him on Radio Row. But interviews can go one of two ways. Right? right when I talk to guys, a lot of times – they can move you up pretty high or move you down pretty high. When I interviewed Bryce Young and Will Anderson, I, I, Will Anderson was already going to be, for me, the, the number one defensive player in that draft. But after interviewing him, that solidified it. When I interviewed Bryce Young, I already had questions. and I was a C.J. Stroud guy, and I had more questions leaving it. When I interviewed Brent, Brennan Rice, I, I was sitting here going, this is a guy whose dad is a Hall of Famer, and he's not using that to be like, look at me, I'm Jerry Rice's kid. Look at me, I should get this, I should do that. It's a guy who's like, that's my dad, but I I want to live up to his lofty standards of what he did in the NFL, but also I'm my own man. Like, I get that his shadow for some people is going to overshadow me, but that's on them, not me. I'm I'm going to do and pave my own way. And, and we talked about it for a while, and we, we were laughing about how his his 40 times and his RAS is, is, is much better than his dad. Uh, I will say he has not run the hill, which if you uh, know about the hill, um, that should make you like, okay, why aren't you running the hill with your dad? Got to be the best workout of all time. But I, I was left pretty pretty enamored with him as a person. And again, I think that that is part of the equation here of I think he's going to be a hard worker. He's going he's gonna to go. He's going to improve his game. Um, and also having two rices on the team is, is neat. Yeah, I'm definitely not worried about the, the RAS with this one, given the – the, the genes, right? Oh, I like him. My issue here is I do think that the upside is limited. I think you're looking at a 500, 600 yards per season kind of guy. I, I really don't see a ton of bust potential here. I just think he's been groomed to be a consummate pro, and that's what you're going to get. And your, your, your personal experience, your personal anecdote backs that up. So I'm right at market with Brendan Rice. Uh, let's move on to Taj Washington, his teammate at USC, a fellow, fellow Trojan, 5'10", 174 pounds. He's very small, 22.8 years old, breakout age, 19.3, pretty good there. Uh, RAS, not available, official lack of measurements. I kind of wonder if he didn't measure just because he was scared about how low his weight would get. Not a good sign. His comps are Jamison Crowder and Josh Downs. So the key question here, and it scares me, is he too small, uh, slow for uh, his smaller size? So I think he runs almost a four, six at five ten and, and pretty slight. That guy would not be on my board. He just wouldn't be. So yeah. I am, I'm much lower. Yeah. Again, the breakout age is phenomenal, but you, you and I are kind of the same page here, that size, that weight, especially just for Kansas city and the chiefs again, for all the, for the outliers of the tank Dells and the like, it's too risky for me. I, I, I'm just out on that. All right, we'll finish up today's show with Jamari Thrash from Louisville, six foot one eighty eight, twenty three point three years old. His breakout age twenty one point seven. His RAS six point two nine. His comps. Uh, well, we should actually both like this since I love Deontay Johnson and you love Jaden Reed. And the key question about Thrash is: took five years to get to the big school production. This is my guy. This is who I am hanging my hat on this year. Uh, I just do not understand why he's so low. I think we are putting way too much into that RAS, but here's why. Because this slender separator type, who is about 5'11", 6 foot, 180, 190, the NFL always misses on these guys. If you look at the RAS of Jaden Reed, it is virtually identical. Deontay Johnson, even worse. Stephon Diggs, even worse. The same archetype of player, the NFL never gets it right. I think he's this year's guy. Really love the player. He was at Georgia Southern until last year. He came into Louisville. I was really impressed with him playing against some pretty good talent like uh, Andrew Phillips from Kentucky and, and whatnot. So I'm much higher than him. I would have him, oh gosh, top 14, top 13, around where I had Des Walker. That's how much I like him. He just, this guy can just play football. Like you watch Jaden Reed last year, and like this guy just can run. He, he's a filthy route runner. 
And I think the NFL just gets too caught up in, in all these, these track, these track measurables, and they just don't look at the route tree and how well these guys separate. This guy can do it. Big fan. If the chiefs could get him sometime in the third round, I think that would be one of the steals of the draft. I'd be over the moon. Uh, we'll see where he goes. Yeah. But you? Amon Ross St. Brown, also kind of the a little heavier, but a little bit the same thing, you know, six foot, 200, right? You're right. It's, it's that 5'11", 190 ish. Cause nothing jumps out at you. There's nothing that screams elite. Like, Deontay Johnson, nothing screams elite, but somehow he's an elite separator. You know, I, I go back and forth because I also thought Sky Moore fits into this category as well. And I was dead wrong on Sky. Couldn't be more wrong. Because all of his numbers were the exact same as Deontay Johnson's, which are then are again the same as Thrash. You know, I, I, if this would have happened before Sky Moore, I'd have been all the way in. But because of that, it's giving me just a little bit, and probably it's unfair because, again, this is a personal one instead of the totality of, of everything. But because of that personal antidote of what we have seen with Sky so far, even though he's in the same kind of category, it gives me a little more cause than you, a little more, a little more pause, I should say, than you. Yeah, I have a lot of cause, so. Um, but I, I get the pause sky more is kind of the downside here that I'm not really considering as much as because I really think this guy knows how to play the wide receiver position. And I think this is a good way to put a button on this, on this preview. Uh, as we look forward to next week, sometimes we, we get so caught up in, in these certain molds, like, is he big? Is he, you know, is he small and lightning fast? And does he do, does he, is he a contested catch guys? He's, is he a slot guy? And these guys that can just play receiver kind of, we miss him. you know, was Jarvis Landry fast. I mean, his, no. his RAS score was, I mean, like not even one or something like that. Keenan Allen, not exactly Usain yeah. Bolt. Right. So I think sometimes we forget running back is much more of, of a position where you want to be a great athlete. This is, is, is more of a technical skill. There are a lot of guys that will not blow you away with their athleticism that will go out there and carve corners who are twice as athletic as them up. It just happens all the time. So just something to remember going forward, but this was very fun. We got, I can't believe we got through this and talking a little Stefan Diggs in an hour. I mean, we were, we really stayed on task. Great job, Sterling. Uh, appreciate the discipline here. Uh, filibuster. I don't know. I was, just, I was just trying to extend this out because we actually did such a great job and I'm very proud of us. Yeah. I don't know how much I could filibuster and talk about these guys more. We're going to have the perfect guy, the, the foremost receiver expert coming on next week to help us dive back in. But that's all we've got today. Props to the chat. We appreciate you guys. Uh, if you haven't mashed the like button, do so. Also, if you haven't subscribed, what are you doing? Audio pod listeners. Please consider giving us a five-star review on either Apple or Spotify. That helps AA grow even faster. Join us next Wednesday for Wide Receiver Fever Part 2. No longer at 4.30 p.m. Central. We're now at 5 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Eastern uh, on Wednesdays. We're going to try to catch, catch, catch the uh, after-work crowd a little bit more by backing up a half an hour. But until next week, go Chiefs.